Sup ladies, it's Thursday, it's Jess here and I'm filling in for Fresh and I'm going to be real honest, uh, my head is all sorts of fuzzy and all sorts of not behaving today. Uh, my thoughts and my words don't make sense, so we're going to roll with it, but this might be a train wreck. I'm not really sure. But anyway, this week we have two topics. The first is, in five words, what would you tell your teenage self? And the second one is, what, what do you wish that you knew or had done or did or whatever before coming out? So I'm going to do both of them. The first one, in five words, what would we tell our teenage self? This is slightly comical to me because I've only been not a teenager for four months. But in those four months, I have gained all sorts of wisdom so I can give advice. <laughs> Jess. Nitwit, blubber, oddment, tweak. That would be all sorts of confusing for my teenage self, but if you get the reference, you're my favorite. Um, no, I'd probably say something like, um, medicine is not for you, or stick with it till 20. That's ambiguous. No one's gonna know what that means. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to the second topic. This is the one that's giving me all sorts of trouble, but I'm going to try and do what I can. Uh, what do I wish that I knew before coming out? Um, my coming out story is not traditional. It's not linear. Um, it's very complex and complicated and wrapped up in so many different things. It's hard to tear it apart from my family and my upbringing and uh, my parents and where I grew up and religion and mental health and politics it's just so hard for me to pull it apart and piece together everything and it's so complicated in my head that I can't summarize it in a four to five minute video especially not in the mental state that I am right now to me there's like two essential parts of coming out there's the coming out to yourself and then there's the coming out to everyone else and the coming out to myself was not hard um, I was really fortunate in that I grew up in the San Francisco area so I, you know it took me a little bit to to realize that the feelings that I had <laughs> meant that I was queer, but I, I, it was not hard for me to assimilate that into my own identity. Specifically, I remember when I had the thought that, oh my god, I might be queer. I was in, um, I was in my geometry class in ninth grade with my teacher, Mrs. Friend. That was actually her name, and uh, I remember staring at the wall and just all the and thinking about everything that I, the girl that I had a crush on and all of these different things. And then I just had the realization, I was like, oh my God, am I queer? And that was just like, it hit me. I was like, what? I cannot believe I didn't think of this before. I had, I called the crushes that I had on girls obsessions. So I, I never labeled them as anything like romantic, but I figured it out eventually. And by junior year, I really assimilated, um, being queer into my identity. And so that really wasn't a problem for me. Coming out to myself was an easy process. Coming out to other people uh, was not. It's not. I don't want to make this video sad. Uh, okay. <laughs> Knowing what I know now about how complicated coming out to people is, I don't, I didn't have the traditional, like, you come out to yourself and then you eventually come out to your family and your friends and it just trickles down and it's a continuous process. But there's that traditional framework of you come out to yourself and then you come out to your family and then your friends and then it, you know, slowly happens. That's not what happened for me <laughs> at all. I mean, there I, I'm at school right now and there are people here who know that I'm queer and, you know, are very supportive and all that. But there are also people who don't know. And I've never had a burning need or a burning passion to tell people. A lot of um, gay and lesbian people will tell you that um, they felt like they needed to tell people and that they were living a lie and that they wanted to be honest and they needed to tell people to free themselves, to free themselves out of this closet, out of this box and to live their life. I have never felt like that in my entire life. I have never felt as though I need to tell people and that's partially because I'm a pretty private person um, and it's mostly that I'm a private person but also that I just don't I don't, I don't need to tell, I don't feel the need to tell people. I tell people who I want to tell and who need to know. Um, but other than that, it's like, it's a non-issue. I mean, if someone came up to me and said, bro, you gay? I'd be like, what up? Yeah. Like, that'd be fine. But I have trouble breaching that barrier and reaching out to people in that way. So to get back to the topic, because I've been very tangential, um, I would tell myself, um, or I wish, I wish I would have known that I would have said to myself, this is what I would have said, I would have said, 
sweetheart, sweetie pie, muffin cup, honey boo boo child, you are not traditional and you're not going to have a traditional coming out experience. Uh, you can't. It's not going to happen. So don't try and force it. Uh, don't feel bad about it. Don't feel alienated for it or try not to. Do what feels right because that's what makes it right. Um, just live your life and be happy, okay? I love you. I love you. You're still fabulous. All right, so that's about it for me guys this week. I'm sure I'll be seeing you guys soon, but have a fabulous week. Um, I'm gonna go try and be normal for a second. Okay, bye.